This video is brought to you by Altium. In today's episode, you will learn how to make an IoT based smart energy meter using ESP32 Wi Fi plus Bluetooth module, the ZMPD101B AC voltage sensor, the DF Robot CD clamp current sensor, and the Google Sheet or Google Split Sheet is the IoT platform for the real time monitoring and data logging. This is the prototype model of IoT based smart energy meter and this is my Google spreadsheet for monitoring the date, time, voltage, current, power and units. But before I start the practical demonstration, there are certain things which I would like to talk about. Number one, you might be thinking why Google Sheet or Google spreadsheet is the IoT platform. Why not Blink IoT platform? Well, Blink is an amazing IoT platform and I have used it in so many projects and it's good for the real-time data monitoring. But the Google spreadsheet is perfect for the real-time monitoring and data logging. It's absolutely free. You can monitor as many sensors as you want. You can use multiple Google Sheets and you don't have to pay a single penny. I know it doesn't have those fancy widgets, but I really don't care about the widgets. I want real-time monitoring and data logging and I know Google Spreadsheet is perfect for this job. Number two, as a beginner, you might also be thinking about why ESP32? Why not ESP8266? Well, the answer is ESP8266 has only one analog pin, whereas on the other hand, ESP32 has got multiple analog pins and it also has the advantage of having a Bluetooth module. I'm not saying that you can't use the node MCU ESP8266 for monitoring multiple analog sensors. You can use the ADS1015 to increase the analog pins on the ESP8266 for connecting multiple analog sensors. Number three, your sensors should be collaborated, otherwise, your project won't be of any use. In my previous Arduino Home Energy Monitor based video, I explained in detail how to collaborate the ZMPD101B AC voltage sensor and how to calibrate the CT clamp current sensor. So you can apply the same calibration techniques over here. I think I have shared enough useful information with you guys. So now let's go ahead and start the practical demonstration. My laptop is connected to the Wi-Fi. Since this is an IoT based project, it really doesn't matter if you connect the laptop and ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module to the same Wi-Fi network or different Wi-Fi networks. Anyway, in the Google spreadsheet, I will be monitoring the date, time, voltage, current, power and units. I'm going to supply AC voltage to the ZMPD101B AC voltage sensor. Be very careful, never touch these contacts when the AC supply is connected. Next, I'm going to attach the CT clamp current sensor. Everything looks good, but first I'm going to measure the actual voltage and current. The actual voltage is 168 volts. The actual load current fluctuates between 0.35 and 0.36 ampere. Now let's power up the ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module. As you can see, I'm able to receive the desired values. You can see the measured voltage and current values are pretty close to the actual voltage and current values. If on your side the current value is different, then you can change the correction factor value in the programming. Anyway, once the data is received in the Google spreadsheet, then it's not going anywhere unless you delete it yourself. Anyway, you can also monitor the same values on your cell phone. All you need is to log in into your account. You can check the voltage, current, power and units at any given time. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the connections. As usual, I'm using my designed ESP32 based development board, but you can also do the same exact connections on a breadboard. For now, forget about the relays and just concentrate on the connections I'm about to explain. Connect the VCC and ground pins of the ZMPT101B AC voltage sensor to the ESP32 3.3V and ground. Connect the out pin of the ZMPT101B voltage sensor to the ESP32 IO34. Connect the VCC and ground wires of the AC current sensor to the ESP32 3.3V and ground. 
connect the output signal via A to the ESP32 IO33. So that's all about the connections and still if you think you have missed anything then you can follow this circuit diagram. Now let's go ahead and start with the Google spreadsheet setup. Ultim Designer is the world's most trusted PCB design system. Ultim Designer enables engineers to effortlessly connect with every facet of the electronics design process. Over 35 years of innovation and development focused on a truly unified design environment makes it the most widely used PCB design solution. With Ultim Designer, you can create PCB designs with an intuitive and powerful interface that connects you to every aspect of the electronics design process. Route it your way through any angle, tune for the delay, push, slide and walk around faster than ever. Easily work together with your mechanical team and forget about the days of swapping design files. Every design change stays in sync between Ultium Designer and Solidworks, PTC Crew, Autodesk Inventor, Autodesk Fusion 360 or Siemens NX. Interact and collaborate with mechanical designers like never before in a photorealistic 3D design environment. One of the best things about Ultium Designer is that you can share your designs with your team members using Ultium 365. They can check your design, leave comments and if there are any issues, they can fix them from anywhere in the world. Ultium Designer also uses the world's fastest company search engine, Octopart, so you won't have any difficulty in searching for components. Links to the Ultium Designer, Ultium 365 and Octopart are given in the description. While you are logged in into your registered Gmail ID, click on Google Apps. Click on Sheets. Click on Start a new spreadsheet. Enter your project name. Set the column names. Go to the Extensions menu and click on the app script. Enter the project name. Copy and paste this script. You can download it from my article. Go to your Google spreadsheet and copy this part of the URL and paste it in the script. Click on the deploy button and select new deployment. Click on enable deployment types and select web app. Write the description. Under who has access, select anyone and then click on the deploy button. Click on authorize access. Select your Gmail account. Click on advanced. Select the project. Click the allow button. Copy the deployment ID. Open the ESP32 programming which you can download from our website electronicclinic.com and paste it next to the Google script ID and that's it. Finally, you can select your ESP32 board and the communication port and click on the upload button. And don't forget to change your SSID and password. As you can see, the program has been uploaded. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.